Cheers to everyone for watching. My name is Mitchell of the Stereo Picture Society. This is a channel where I review Canadian albums, and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Colorado album, Retaliation Vacation. This is the fourth and final album from Ottawa, Ontario indie rock band Colorado. The band has had a lot of great highlights in their years. They've toured extensively for the last 13 years around the world. They've released one of my favorite music videos, the Americanorama music video. And they are the founders of Canadian indie label Royal Mountain Records, which have invested in the success of many Canadian artists such as Always, Pup, Mac DeMarco, US Girls, Calpurnia, you name it. All of them due to Royal Mountain. My best guess is that the band wanted to break up to focus more on the record label and transition into the middle years of their lives, maybe starting families potentially. But the themes of quitting the band do make their way onto this record on a few tracks. The chorus on the track Get Over It may be directed to fans of the band that are missing out on a big part of their lives just ending. And the album's lead single, One Last Time, pulls directly from the adventures that the band has had over their career. But for the most part, when I enjoy this record, I haven't had the band's retirement on my mind as a common theme when I listen to it. For most people going into this new Colorado record, they wouldn't know that it would be their last, and would likely see it in the same way that I do, in that it's a fairly generic indie garage rock project. There are many songs on this record like Time on Earth and the closing track A Little Bit of Madness that have like conga drums that have the same drum beat, crunchy guitars and energetic enough vocals to please screaming fans. It reminded me of the watered down overproduced music that the Black Keys are putting out at the moment. There are moments such as on the song SOS where Colorado are up to writing just about nothing, just about partying really. There are songs that could be pretty good on the background while stuff is going on, such as a beach party, or maybe people are over at your house, but this isn't good for a focused listen. Songs such as SOS and Time on Earth should have been over maybe a minute and a half before it actually was. And speaking of stuff that should have been over before we even start, <laughs> there are two songs on the start of the album that feature children's choir. And I figured this kind of experimentation should have been done at some point, as Colorado are a very fun-loving, get dancing band. But the kids repeating the chorus over the course of like half of the song, especially at the outro, wears out quick. But I somewhat appreciate the idea of them being on here though. There's a song here called Speechless that appears on Colorado's 2015 release, 111 songs. Yes, it's real. That has been remixed and re-recorded for this album. So I feel like with On Speechless and on the next song, Days Without Sugar, the kids are meant to bring in the theme of naivete and of going back to the way things were. On the last track, A Little Touch of Madness, there is a nice guitar solo that ends out the song, but my favorite track is actually the first track, Straight to Hell. It's a folk track with some off-kilter timing in the chorus and a nice melody. However, the second verse of this song has a question and love my liberalism kind of uh, writing. It's very underwritten and I just can't really get behind that sentiment of it. Overall, when I'm listening to this record through and through now, I am hearing the last bits of a band that has done a lot for the Canadian indie scene. I'm listening to it with respect as opposed to enjoyment out of what I'm hearing, as most of the stuff that's coming from the record is generic, the beats, the crunch on the guitars, the talking vocals, the rapping that appears on Days Without Sugar. It is not the experimental swan song that I would have expected from a band that has done so much to promote the Canadian indie scene. With so many artists and sources to look to, to make this album better, they decided to go uh, closet themselves and produce this on their own, and I feel like the odds weren't in their favor. I mean, the most experimental this album gets is probably the children's choir, like the tape delay on the last song, and maybe the synths that come in on the intro of the track one last time. So, I mean, this review probably ruins my chances of even getting on Royal Mountain Records maybe someday, but I'm feeling a decent to strong three on this album. If you liked what I had to say about Colorado and Canadian music, you can go ahead and like this video. You can comment on it with any arguments or qualms you might have about it. You can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm almost at 50. And you can share it with any music nerds like me that you may know. My name is Mitchell of the Stereo Picture Society. Cheers again for watching, and I will see you later.